John Brennan is the top counterterrorism advisor to President Obama. Now, he actually would have been the head of the CIA uh, for the first term, and President Obama wanted to nominate him for that back in 2009. But uh, progressive opponents of uh, Brennan pushed back because he was actually the uh, deputy uh, head of the CIA under George W. Bush. Now, and under George W. Bush, he defended torture. Now, he says he wasn't involved. I know, I'm sure you weren't. But in 2007, there's a very strong quote by him saying, these are the tactics we needed to use, and by the way, these guys were terrorists who did 9-11, they killed 3,000 American citizens, basically saying they had it coming. So that was troubling, and he supported a lot of the Bush administration uh, principles on the war on terror, which were you know, renditions and all the dark side stuff that Dick Cheney kept talking about. So why in the world would you pick that guy? Well, that's because we didn't know it at the time, but that's what President Obama does day in and day out. He's like, all right, who is the strongest right winger we have? Okay, great. Like at the head of the DEA is a former Bush appointee who's a radical right winger. That's why they've done all those drug dispensary raids. And I can give you a hundred examples, but Brennan is a great example of that. But now, four years later, since Obama has gotten all the Democrats and so-called progressives and liberals to bow their heads, uh, and he was his top counterterrorism advisor, well, he says, now I am going to nominate him to be the CIA. And what do the rest of the Democrats do? <laughs> yes, John Brennan. We were always in favor of John Brennan. All right. Uh, as usual, Glenn, Glenn Greenwald has a terrific article about this. And I just want to quote him because his points are terrific. He says, quote, the very idea that someone should be disqualified from the service in the Obama administration because of involvement in and support for extremist Bush terrorism policies seems quaint and obsolete given the great continuity between Bush and Obama on these issues. Oof, that hurts, but it's true. You know, there was just a story in the Washington Post about how we have continued and in fact we have increased the rendition program that Bush used to run and liberals like President Obama used to say were outrageous. The warrantless wiretapping, Eric Holder said he could not believe any president would break the law in that fashion. Now Eric Holder is in charge of warrantless wiretapping as the Attorney General. And the list goes on and on. So since Obama's taken almost all of the uh, Bush policies, and by the way, the one policy he's supposed to be against was torture. Now, of course, nobody ever got punished for that. You know, look forward, but not backward. Also, when someone is renditioned to another country, oftentimes they are tortured. So he's not exactly against all torture either. But Greenwald makes a good point. Like after. Bush and Obama have been the same, it, you realize it makes perfect sense that Obama would pick Bush's main guy on the war on terror, Brennan, because that's the policies he does. Glenn continues, Brennan is a merely a symptom of Obama's own extremism in these areas, not a cause. This continuity will continue with or without Brennan because they are rather obviously Obama's preferred policies. Yeah, Obama's not being tricked. It's not like Brennan says, hey, you know what, uh, maybe uh, we should uh, do drone strikes uh, on people who don't even know. Like the main thing that Brennan has argued for, and he's argued for many of the policies, uh, but one of the main things he's known for is arguing for signature strikes. Again, those are the drone strikes where we don't know who the target is. We're like, I don't know, it looks like there's some activity that might be related to a terrorist or a militant or anyone with a weapon, which is a high percentage of people in Yemen and Pakistan. Who cares us bomb? Now that is indefensible. It's one thing to do a drone strike on an actual target. You say, okay, that guy is number 17 on Al Qaeda's list. It's another thing to say, I don't know, they're Pakistanis. Hit them, right? That's what Brennan stands for. And I, what I love is reading Daniel Kleidman's book about this. He wrote Kill or Capture. And he's not against any of these guys. He just reports the facts. In fact, I've had a conversation with him, and he's gotten used to all this as being what you're supposed to do. But when you read his account of it, Brennan does the same trick every time. He's like, oh man, President Obama, you know, I'm a Catholic and I got a lot of moral issues with this and I'm really torn up about it inside. Anyway, let's push the button. And Obama loves that because he wants to push the button, but he wants to feel like they had a, man, oof, God, that was a tough moral issue. And we really put a couple of minutes of thought into that one. So he's like, oh, Brennan, yeah, God, it's his favorite foreign policy guy within the administration by all these accounts, okay? He goes, ah, man, oh, ooh. should we kill people we don't even know about? Yeah, you're right, let's just kill them. Okay, uh, how about U.S. citizens? Should we execute them without a trial? Oh, man, Brennan's torn up about that one, too. But guess what? 
He votes yes, and so does Obama. Greenwald continues, it is a perfect illustration of the Obama legacy that a person who was untouchable as a CIA chief in 2008 because of his support for Bush's most radical policies is not only Obama's choice for the same position now, but will encounter very little resistance. Oh, that's a great point. That's where the Democrats bow their heads and they go, well, if Obama does signature strikes and Obama does renditions and Obama does warrantless wiretapping, then I must be in favor of it. What a wonderful, swell, prog progressive position. Finally, Greenwald says, within this change, one finds one of the most significant aspects of the Obama presidency. His conversion of what were once highly contentious right-wing policies into harmonious dogma of the DC bipartisan consensus. All these points were devastating, but that's the most devastating one. Because before it was radical when Bush did it. And at least half the country and, and the, one of the major political parties were opposed to it. Now that Obama's doing it, everybody bows their head, everybody agrees, Democrats and Republicans, who cares about people's rights? We will do indefinite detentions, and now with the National Defense Authorization Act, possibly of U.S. citizens on U.S. soil, we will take away your rights, your Fourth Amendment rights through warrantless wiretapping and all of the other abuses, and it will not be frowned upon as Brennan is nominated to be the head of the CIA and will certainly be confirmed. It is celebrated. This is what Obama has brought you. Now, if you don't know any of this, you wonder why are they, why do they hate Obama so much? We don't hate Obama, we're just telling you what he did, right? And I, I argued for him back in 2008, and I voted for him. I don't hate the guy, I wish he'd do much better. From time to time, I'm foolish enough to have a tiny bit of hope. <laughs> and then that hope is beaten out of me every single time. This is what he does, this is what he stands for. You shall know him by his works. And Brennan is one of his top works.